What's up, guys, and welcome to the ultimate metalcore tier list. This is the only list that matters because it's backed up by real data, real science, not like those other mumbo jumbo lists, okay? This is this is real facts, no opinions here, okay? But before we get started, gotta let you know that this template wasn't created by me, okay? It was created by our friend Colin, who is a big fisherman, apparently, according to his display picture. So with that being said, this video is taken from my Twitch live stream, and it's pretty long. So if you got nothing to do and maybe taking a crap for like 45 minutes or something, then this is the perfect time to go listen to me talk about your favorite bands and roast them. But, you know, I think that's all we need for chit chat. So let's fuck do it. Make it a little bit easier for you guys to see this. So, I the Breather. Who who are some I the Breather fans in the chat? Because to me, this band's pretty freaking sick. The song Forgiven. Oh my god, that song is classic metalcore. But you know how I'm gonna rank this is also like based off influence. It's not just like their music. It's like uh, how commercially successful are they? Or like how much have they influenced other bands like on this list? So it's like all things combined. Even if I don't listen to them and their influence is like huge, I'm gonna rank them pretty high. So I the Breather is a solid band. I'm just going to leave them at pretty good. They're solid. They're not anything groundbreaking, but damn, they do have some solid hits. So look at this. Any given day. I'm, I'm just going to put this at the bottom. Any given day. I've never really listened to it. any given day. Avenged Soundfold. <laughs> All right. This is going to be, um, this is going to be a tricky one for a few people. So Avenged Soundfold and I go way back when I was like uh, 13 years old. They had a, a Hopeless Records had a little compilation with bands that I listened to like Thrice and some other bands. And then Avenged Soundfold was on it with Unholy Confessions. Blew my mind when I was a kid. Um, and then their album after that, City of Evil, is fucking awesome. But then they, they kind of like lost traction a little bit you know their past later albums weren't as good their recent one though the stage was actually i enjoyed the stage all that combined i think this band is actually really influential i'm a little bit torn between pretty good because a lot of their cds are very very meh but then they do have some bangers man i want to put them up at crank it up every time because they're hugely influential all right is uh where's friggin richard from True Shot, because Amur is a band that he absolutely adores. <laughs> you know what? Okay, so with Amur, their lyrics are so cringy, but whatever, man. They they own up to it. Their breakdowns are solid. Their new album with uh, Josh Travis on guitar was actually pretty good. It wasn't bad for what it was trying to achieve, and because of that, they're tolerable. They're tolerable. I'm gonna put them at tolerable. So next up, we got Boo. Boo. Oh man, I love this band. So Boo was like huge for me back in the day. New Rain was technical deathcore that blew my mind when I was younger. And then, uh, you know, some of their later releases started like dipping interest for me as well. Just same thing as Event Semfold. But then their new CD that came out this year is pretty solid. Like a lot of bangers on it. Um, they're pretty influential too. Uh, Jason Richardson obviously is like a huge um, star in the metal scene. So because of that, Crank it up every time, baby. Crank it up every time. All right, Alpha Wolf. So Alpha Wolf is still relatively new to the scene. Because of that, they're not going to be all day every day for me. All day every day has to be they've been around for a while. There's, they have a reputation and they've had an, enough albums to justify how good they are. So with Alpha Wolf, you know, their last album was actually really solid. And then some of the singles beforehand. Crank it up every time. I'd say pretty good. I'd say pretty good. I know a lot of people love Alpha Wolf, especially the younger crew, but... I don't know. They're they're good for sure, but I'm not going to listen to them every day. So issues. So I'm a little bit late to the issues party. If you guys watch my issues reactions, I enjoy I enjoyed their new album. And then the I don't know some of their older stuff for me. I feel like uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say like cheesy. It can be a little bit cheesy. It can be a little bit cliche, but damn, the vocals are so good. <sighs> Pretty good. Pretty good. So this band. While she sleeps in the Discord, in my Discord, that is Nightbot plugging the Discord or is she being lazy? You know, it is the best Discord, except there's a lot of while she sleeps haters. And uh, I'm going to defend them, man, because uh, 
One of the comments that I got in the Discord was while she sleeps is generic. And that is one of the last things I will call while she sleeps. I feel like if you actually listen to their discography, they always play around with structures. They have some amazing riffs. Um, they might do some metalcore tropes here and there, but I would argue like tons of the other bands here are very cliche with that. So while she sleeps, I think are actually pretty innovative in a lot of areas, except their past two albums were weak. That is why I think a lot of people that aren't into While She Sleeps have only heard like the recent albums and they're not as good as You Are We. You Are We is a solid metalcore release. But they, yeah, I think because they've had some mixed albums recently, I'm going to put it as pretty good. Pretty good. Capture the Crowns. Nah, we're going to skip that. I don't even know Capture the Crowns. Crown the Empire. Okay, so this was actually going to be my reaction tomorrow for uh, the new song from Crown the Empire, which actually was pretty, pretty pretty good but a lot of their singles are pretty 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 meh <laughs> uh actually there's one song called 2020 which is actually i really like but i've heard that crown the empire uses ghost writers too they don't even write their own uh material so because of that they're tolerable uh-uh uh-uh you got you got to write your own material okay north lane so this band wouldn't exist without Architects because their name is taken from an Architects song. That's first and foremost. Uh, you know, when they came out with uh, Discoveries, boom, that, sh that shit shook up the metalcore scene back in the day. Their albums after that have been good. I think when uh, Marcus joined the band, it, it, Mesmer and stuff were a little bit weak, but Alien was awesome. Alien was so good. Um, and it's also influencing some other bands that I'm hearing lately too. It's like... You know, Doom, Mick Gordon, and uh, North Lane Alien. Every band is doing that gent, super focus on electronic samples into their music kind of thing. I think North Lane is fucking awesome. Uh, I'm going to put it, crank it up every time. Between the Barry to Me, BT Bam. So it, this band is not even like metalcore, really. They do have, they're progressive metalcore, but lately their new albums are prog. But I am a BT Bam fanboy for sure. But I feel like they shouldn't be part of this list because I, people are for sure going to skip to the end of this list when I put this on YouTube just to see it. And they're not going to listen to what I have to say. But BT Bam all day, every day. But, you know, I would put them also and crank it up every time because I feel like they're not really a true metalcore band. They're a little they're too proggy for that. But BT Bam is fucking amazing. They they shook up the metalcore scene back in 2007 when Colors came out, too. That's another thing. People don't realize that their influence is actually widespread in terms of making bands a lot more proggy, like Periphery, for example, and um, some of the more bands that like focus on longer um, song durations and stuff. I want to say it's all due to BT Bam. It's like Dream Theater as well, but BT Bam played a big role in that. Okay, All That Remains. All That Remains is one of the best classic metalcore bands, I would say. The Fall of Ideals is an amazing album. It still holds up. However, their later releases have been, eh. except all that remains did raid one of our streams before, and uh, uh, they made us check out some of their new songs, and they were actually pretty good. Fuck it, all that remains is all all day every day. They are way too important to the metalcore scene, man. Fall of Ideals is still holds that shit up. Uh, we butter the bread with butter. Ah, uh, I don't I don't know if I can rank them. I've only heard like two songs. I'd say tolerable. That's only because I haven't really listened to their music too much, but they're fun. I heard the new album is actually one of the best albums of the year. We'll see. Uh, people say that a lot. Novelists. So Novelist is a band that I enjoyed before they uh, switched vocalists. And then as soon as they got the new vocalist from Alaska, their stuff has gone a little bit more poppy and less proggy. That's always a bad sign in my books. However, their new, the newest single that they put out has actually one of my favorite Novelist songs. Oh, I think... I'm going to put them as pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. I'm not putting Slipknot on this list. I'm not putting Slipknot on this list. They're not, they're not a metalcore band. They're new metal. They're, they would be like top tier though because of their influence, but they're not metalcore. I'm not going to rank them. Tesseract, again, Tesseract is too proggy. They're not metalcore. Who made this list? Colin. Shame on you, Colin. Holding the fish in his display picture. Volumes. All right, Volumes is a band that they ain't. They're right. I know a lot of people adore Volumes, man. So uh, I've checked out some of their older stuff. I dig it. Maybe it's because I've already listened to so much Periphery that Volumes doesn't really spark that much interest for me. 
their new singles have been pretty good. I've enjoyed their new singles. What was it? the album before had some really poppy stuff that was actually decent. I don't know. They're kind of a mixed bag for me. I think they're good and they've definitely helped uh, bring a lot more gent to the scene, just like Periphery. I think they're very influential as well. I'm going to put them as pretty good. Who is getting pissed off in the chat right now? <laughs> Mac. <laughs> I know, man. I know. You you came here just for the Parkway Drive one. All right. Well, we got some Vale of Maya. Vale of Maya, man. Would I say Periphery is a metalcore band? I put Between the Bear to Me up, so Periphery should go up with using that same logic. So, I don't know. They're they're pretty proggy, but they do have some metalcore hits as well. So, maybe. I'll, I'll put them in this list. So, Vale of Maya, though, absolutely adore this band. Uh, Mark is one of the best guitarists, like, ever just because of his creativity their songs are incredibly catchy even when they were deathcore they were so melodic so technical and then their new stuff also technical but in with more gent focus and then uh vocals are so so hooky man both styles of veil vale maya is awesome deathcore metalcore they have done no wrong all day every day baby august burns red Ooh, this one might be controversial because august burns red was a band that when I was in high school, because these guys are legends, obviously. They've been around forever. Back in the day, holy shit, what album was it? Messenger and Constellations were insane. I remember just being blown away by the drumming and guitar work and everything. But then they kept making the same album over and over. I know this is going to hurt a lot of people, but I have gone so fatigued by their music. Uh, even their new album was pretty good. It had some bangers, but um, I like it when bands can... Sure, they might throw in like a little salsa bit here and there. But their style of music hasn't really developed since I was a kid. It's still the same music. Nathan! Dude, I think you are number one. I think you are number one right now as the most gifted sub person. I don't know what to call you. Sub king. You're the sub king, bro. <laughs> Suck it, potato. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking shit about Metalcore, and I'm talking shit about August Birds Red. Maybe if they wrote a different album once in a while, it would be all day, every day. But they're crazy influential. I'm just going to say they're uh, they're cranking up every time. They're they're not just pretty good. They're they're too good for that. I get that. They're cranking up every time, all day, every day. If they changed up their albums once in a while, make me famous. Never heard of them. Nah. After the burial. Okay. After the burial is a band that. Even calling them metalcore is a little bit weird because they're a little bit deathcore, especially their older stuff. And then they're also a little bit proggy as well. Um, they're a good hybrid. And I think because of that, they're going to be pretty high up on my list. Also, guitar work is phenomenal. Uh, the band's had a crazy history as well with, you know, obviously losing their guitars and this insane story. Vocals, they, they've gone through some vocal changes, but both vocalists like held down the fort. They're both good. They don't really write bad music, in my opinion. Crank it up every time. Abandon all ships. Okay, so abandon all ships was during that time when I had a big distaste for metalcore. I sound like such a snob. I am such a snob, man. So, <laughs> with uh, back in the day when metalcore was so infused with electronic elements and it was all dancey and tacky, oh, I couldn't tolerate it. That's when I think my big prog phase kicked in. But yeah, so I think abandon all ships was one of the reasons for me to not like metalcore. Never, ever, forever, never. I am sorry, Abandon All Ships fans. Not for me, man. I, I can, I know, they're kind of fun. Oh, man, they are kind of fun, actually. Hold up, hold up. I forgot that Tolerable was the next one because I can tolerate them. No, I can tolerate them. By the way, everyone, this list was backed up by science and data analysts and everything. This is not just me. This is backed up by real hard facts, okay? So, Upon Drowning, I don't know who the, that band is. Crystal Lake! Oh shit, this is a band that, uh, oh yeah, I fuck with this band. You know, ever since I heard Omega on Spotify, it blew my mind. And uh, I think that they're actually one of the reasons I started this reaction channel, weirdly enough, because I, I wanted, I was so obsessed with that song that I was YouTubing it. And I think I found reaction videos because of Crystal Lake. Then I started like watching Galactic Criminal and Truon. So Crystal Lake probably is the reason why I started watching reaction channels actually weirdly enough but you know their music is awesome I their old stuff was pretty good I know they're pretty much a Parkway Drive copycat in their old stuff but their new stuff is very a good blend of sci-fi Japanese anime metal with some classic metalcore they're crank it up every time man and their live shows are fucking nuts 
Uh, tear out the heart. Never heard of it. Nah. I see stars. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for the support. So I see stars. This is a band that I would write off completely back in the day until my MVBs, my patrons made me react to a couple songs here and there. I was pleasantly surprised by how, I don't know, so melodic, but like even the electronic parts were like cheesy, but they were purposely cheesy, but then they had some really cool electronic sounds that were a little bit unique. And then the vocals were powerful. Breakdowns were heavy and fun. I actually, there hasn't been one bad I See Star song and all songs that I've heard from them are bangers. That being said, I've only heard like four songs from them, but I'm going to say they're pretty good. I need to hear more songs. That's the thing. I'm not going to put them and crank it up every time because they might have bad songs. I don't know. Uh, Breakdown Sanity. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I don't know if I should rank this. No, I, I'm not going to rank this. That's because I've only heard two songs from them. And I, the, one of the songs was a, re a live version of one of their songs and it was shit quality. No, I got to listen to it with proper quality headphones, breakdown sanity. I can't rank them because I, I don't know their music well enough, but I know that people are obsessed with that band and their, their album is so good. So, okay, era, you guys know me and era, we go way back. So it's actually funny. Um, I've, I've always had issues with this band. I could never get into them, but I understood that their musicianship was insane. Uh, vocals were good too. Everything about this band was good. Their music, I felt like just wasn't clicking with me. There, there was nothing very overly memorable. Mind you, I've never really listened to Augment. I know Augment to fans is like the best album, right? But then the stuff when uh, JT came in, I just felt like eh, it was okay. New album though. Ooh. Chef's Kiss. Chef's Kiss. I love the new album. And it's funny because uh, Jesse Cash um, tagged me in a in a story saying like thank you for uh, everyone supporting Era and like you know reactions to guitar covers. And I messaged him back just saying like hey man, just like it took me so long to get into your music, but I finally get it. Like thank you for uh, still watching the videos and all that stuff. Like your new album is awesome. And he's just like oh thank thank you. Like we we just like the honesty anyway. He was super nice about it. So honestly, Era's fucking great. Crank it up every time. Uh, what the, what is this, Silar? Who the hell is Silar? Meh, I don't know Silar. Invent Animate, I'm, oh man. Oh man, this is gonna, this is gonna hurt a lot of people. Invent Animate is a band that uh, I have very mixed opinions about. I am a huge prog metalcore snob. That is the one specific subgenre music where I, I, I get so extra snobby. Grim X Grim! People are like, oh, Invent Animate is so good, I'm like, yeah, well, have you ever heard Sixth Between the Bear to Me Protest the Hero of the Human Abstract? That's me. I know it. I know that I am. But with Invent Animate, their music, their new EP is solid. However, Grave You, I've never really checked it out after my initial album reaction. Sure, like guitar work is fucking amazing. Drumming, so cool. But their songwriting just was lacking for me. I feel like the songs were just mixed. But I know a lot of people really resonated with it. And I think it's because they have that melancholic touch to their music. A lot of the, the keys that they use in their songs are very like sappy sounding. And I think a lot of people love that kind of sound. That's a sound that I actually don't really care for anymore too much, really. And that's another thing. Uh, that's just personal preference, right? I'm just going to put Invent Animate pretty good. Some people are going to be like, Rrr! it's okay. It's okay. Sworn In. This is a band that I've only heard a few songs and they were fucking sick, but I don't know well them well enough to rank them. I, I would like to check out more from them, though. I Prevail. Uh, Bow Down is pretty fun. Their other single is pretty good. But they're just, they're very definition of cookie cutter. They're cookie cutter, man. They're tolerable. What the hell is this? Do you guys know what that says? I can't read it. No. Alizana. Al Alizana, they're not even a metalcore band. That doesn't seem fair to put them... No, bullshit. All right. Time to get bias, but I don't even care. I can, I can argue why this band is all day, every day. Spoiler, they're all day, every day. This band is one of the most commercially successful bands in the scene back in the day. They were on TV shows. Their music was on like the OC, billboards and stuff. They rocked the Christian rock charts. And then after their emo CD that I couldn't get into with the woman with the mask, meh, I don't like that CD. Then they came out with Define the Great Line. Blew my freaking mind. It is still one of the best albums I've ever heard in my life. And then uh, Lost in the Sound of Separation was really good. Um, we wouldn't have bands like Polaris today. 
the new band Deadlights. There's a lot of bands that are actually influenced by Under Oath style that a lot of new people don't realize. Their new stuff is good. Their new stuff is good, but it doesn't hit the same mark as to find the great line lost in the sound of separation, disambiguation. All day, every day, baby. Under Oath is crazy influential and their music fucking still holds up. Escape the Fate. They're not metalcore. No. Whitechapel. They're not metalcore either, but Kin was fucking awesome. Uh, Ice Nine Kills. All right. Everyone in the chat knows Ice Nine Kills. <sighs> okay. So, yeah, I've had some issues with this band as well. You know, I, I thought their music was a little bit cliche, but then over time I've realized that it's kind of meant to be. And I've, uh, after listening to the Silver Scream one, I'm like, okay, so they're, they're a cheesy band. They embrace it. That's who they are. That's kind of cool. Silver Scream 2 was just a lot of fun to listen to. They don't write bad songs. Even when they write the more cookie cutter radio songs on their albums, they're still really good. Um, they throw in a lot of theatrical elements and they're really quirky. And uh, music musicianship on Silver Scream 2 blew my mind. You know, like I love like, you know, I love a good chorus. I love a good breakdown. But I also love some really amazing guitar work and some really awesome drumming to complement everything. And Silver Scream 2 was that. I say crank it up every time. Yep. Stick to your guns. Man, we haven't put... There's not one never, ever, forever, never. I'm too nice, man. Time to roast some bands. So stick to your guns. Oh, I can't roast them. I can't roast them. They have some solid songs. I, I think they're pretty good. I don't think they're doing anything like overly amazing. They just write some good hardcore punk music with some core elements. They're just solid. Black Veil Brides. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm laughing too. Honestly, I, I've never listened to their music. I have no interest. I'm not, I can't put them in never, ever, forever, never because I haven't listened to their music. If I did, they probably would, but I have no interest because, um, I just don't have interest. They would be here, but I haven't given them a proper chance. No, I have to listen to these bands properly. Woe is me. Oh man. Woe is me. This was during the time when I hated metalcore. Nope. Nope. Poppy choruses, generic chugs, the most cliche metalcore that made metalcore drop off. Yep. Attack, attack. All right, people. Who wants to get roasted? Because attack, attack was another band that I won't ever get into. Their, their influence is because of crabcore. And all, okay. Because of attack, attack, we got Bill Murray and stuff. And I think they got a lot of people into the metalcore scene. So they have a massive influence. But their music sucks. I'm sorry. Their music sucks. But because of their influence, I'm going to put them as tolerable. Gideon. Gideon is a band that I also have heard some the odd songs here and there where some are more hardcore leaning. Some are a good blend of metalcore. Then others have like new metal influence and stuff. So Gideon has some cool range. Um, I think they're solid. I don't think they're anything groundbreaking. I know a lot of people seem to like them. I think they're just, uh, I'm torn between pretty good or tolerable. Maybe just tolerable. No, they're, uh, they're pretty good. Cause uh, I was thinking if someone's going to put on some Gideon while we're hanging out or something, I'd go ham to it, you know? And then if someone puts on attack attack, I'd be like, ugh. so yeah, they're pretty good. Like Moss of Flames. So these guys have been around for a long time. Um, I find their style of metalcore to be okay. I think, uh, the new album got very repetitive for me. All the guitarists were on point. Uh, their old stuff was very melodic. Uh, you know, those big poppy choruses that we are so used to in metalcore. Um, I know a lot of people love that. To me, they're just pretty good. A Skyla Drive. Uh, they're, they're like emo. They're not even metalcore. Suicide Silence? Come on. All right, this is a good one. Currents. I freaking love Currents. Um, they're still relatively new though. So I don't know if I can put them in all day, every day, because like I said, I'm also, uh, ranking these based off influence and their reputation. They've only had, uh, three albums so far in an EP. I think their EP is their best work forever marked and into despair. I think are still the best current songs that I personally enjoy the most. Uh, the CD before that was awesome too. You know, songs like tremors and night terrors are so good as well. Their new album though. Oh man, I find it very just okay. Vocally, super strong. I think vocals are awesome. I think Brian absolutely crushed it on the new album, but instrumentally and songwriting, it, it was very stale. I was hoping for more considering that Currents' previous stuff had 
a good balance of everything. Like Brian was still fucking awesome in the old current. So, but that being said, they're a crank it up every time. They're a crank it up every time. Okay, portraying the martyrs. They came out with man-made disaster. Oh shit, that song blew everyone's mind. Man-made disaster was like, holy crap, who's this band? They're so freaking good. Oh my god, is this deathcore? Is this metalcore? It's like symphonic metalcore, deathcore. Oh my god, it's so fucking heavy, groovy, melodic, and symphonic, badass. And then the rest of their music was just, eh. <laughs> I hate saying it. I hate saying it. They reached out to me. They reached out to me to react to their new song, but I have to be blunt. Their their catalog of music really was just okay. Man Made Disaster was still the best song that they ever had for me. Um, their new single, though, with the new vocalist is solid. However, it's not anything overly fresh or exciting, but it's still relatively new. You know, they're trying to find their footing with the new vocalist. I think they're going in a good direction. I'm just hoping the next singles are a little bit more exciting. I think Betraying the Mars are just pretty good. Demon Hunter. Are these guys even metalcore? They're not even metalcore. No. Okay. Mac, my man, my man. Parkway Drive is one of the most influential bands in the metalcore scene. That being said, I never could get into their music. I never could. I've tried. Uh, I do think they are a gateway metalcore band, just like Azalea Dine, All That Remains. Um, they're kind of that foray. August Burns Red as well. But Parkway Drive, I... I find their music to not really excite me. It's a little chuggy and the riffs are a little bit predictable to say the least. I know that I know some people are going to get offended by saying that. I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. However, their influence is fucking huge. And I their influence is so important. They have gone so many people into metalcore. And um because of that, I think they're pretty good. I think they're just pretty good. I haven't found that one song. I'm trying to listen to the music always with an open mind. I, I do want to get into it, especially like I enjoyed the new uh, Crystal Lake album and everyone's just like, oh, this sounds like old Crystal or this sounds like old Parkway Drive. I'm like, oh, shit. OK, well, I thought it was pretty solid, even though I haven't really gone back to that Crystal Lake album. So there's that as well. Uh, bad Omens. That is so hard to read. Honestly, they're just kind of a Bring Me the Horizon copycat. Pretty good. Bring Me the Horizon. Bring Me the Horizon is without a doubt the most influential band on this list. Next to like Slipknot, but they're not metalcore, right? But is Bring Me the Rising even metalcore anymore? No. They've only made two metalcore albums. There's a hell and no Suicide Season bridges that line between metalcore and deathcore. I guess Suicide Season as well. And then obviously Sep Eternal. Um, Sep Eternal was huge for influence, even when they go into different directions. Like I fucking love That's the Spirit. I always like get torn, which is my favorite album. Honestly, I fucking love Ammo. Right at this moment, I would actually say That's the Spirit is my favorite album. And that's not even metalcore. They're all day, every day, man. Their influence is fucking huge, and their music is good, too. Um, I know some people are going to be like, Oh, Bring Me the Horizon sucks. Uh, I don't care. I like Bring Me the Horizon. Day to Remember. A Day to Remember. How does that breakdown go? Let's go. Classic. Classic. Just because of that, they're pretty good. <laughs> Uh, I saw them live and I actually um, hate to say it. I got bored but with their live setting or their live show, but I, they're very important to the scene as well. I find their music just okay. Attila, I was going to put them as never, ever, forever, never, but pizza is a classic. I can't hate on pizza. It is one of the funniest metalcore songs <laughs> ever written. <laughs> everyone, everyone says never, ever, but like I said, they wrote pizza. They wrote pizza. Fuck them. Pizza's cringy to me. They're tolerable. Oh, this could be my most controversial one. Everyone wants me to hate them. No, nah, I, I love pizza. The rest of their songs, no. <laughs> okay, the Browning. I'm not going to rank the Browning. I have only heard one song from them. And it was actually pretty good, but uh, I don't know them well enough. Periphery. Is this band even metalcore? Like, I would say they're more metalcore than Between the Bear and Me. So I, I'm going to rank them. They're very, they're so influential. It is actually insane. So many bands have, even though Periphery is essentially Sixth and Meshuggah, Brainchild, they're, they brought Gent grooves to core kids, and now Gent is littered throughout the entire scene because of Periphery. That is their how influential they are. Their albums, though, are good in terms like some songs are really good and then other songs are mad. I, I don't feel like none of their albums are actually like amazing. Um, the newest album, I feel like, is the most consistent with all songs actually being very different from one another. I feel like Periphery 4 knocked it out of that park for that. But Periphery Alpha is still my favorite. Stranger Things, um, Hell Below, 
Love that EP or album. I think it's the EP. Uh, they're crank it up every time. Okay, Memphis May Fire. Oh, man. So with Memphis May Fire, you know, I've said it in my reviews for their music. I got into them very early on. I listened to their very first EP that was like a mix of Southern rock and post hardcore. It, it felt like under oath with like a little bit of Southern twang. It was so like exciting. I'm like, holy crap. And then they got Matt Mullins and then their albums after that were very... I know a lot of people like them, but I thought they were just like, man, what is this? Their EP was showed so much promise. And then this is just like a little bit more basic metalcore. It had like a little bit of Southern twain, but they pretty much abandoned it. And then I feel like with each album, they just kept getting worse and more cookie cutter. Never, ever, forever, never. Sorry, MMF fans. I listened to them a long time ago, but now they've disappointed me. I, I hate to say it. Bless the fall. They were, uh, they're, they're fun, cheesy emo metalcore, man. Are they crazy important to the scene? Uh, I, they're good. I do appreciate what they've brought to the scene. And I um I used to love their songs back in the day. I saw them live and I remember the guitar work blowing my mind because that was the first time like I was understanding guitar riffs. And then I saw Between the Barrier to Me and then I was like mind blown. But bless the fall, they're tolerable. Falling in reverse. Should I even rank them? They're not metalcore either. What genre is Falling in Reverse? I don't know. I, I, I don't feel right putting them in this list because they're not really a true metalcore band. Wage War. Wage War. A lot of people. A lot of people love Wage War. However, it's the same argument that I've said about a few bands already on this list that metalcore was huge in the early 2000s. You know, bands like All Remains, Kill Switch Engage, uh, As I Dying. There were so many exciting new bands in different directions. And then mid 2010s to 2020s, that that decade was Bands just being cookie cutter and pop goes punk, poppy choruses. It just got so generic. I lost interest in the scene. And I feel like Wage War is slightly carrying that torch a little bit. And although their breakdowns go hard and some, they have some awesome riffs, I do feel like they're very held back by metalcore tropes. However, their new album was a lot of fun, actually. I, I actually enjoyed the new album. I haven't really gone back to it since reacting to it, except for uh, Manic and Death Roll, the heavier tunes. I'm just going to say pretty good. I'm not even going to say tolerable. They're, they have some solid hits, but nothing groundbreaking. For all the sleeping, I don't know who you are. Sleeping with sirens that are not in metalcore. Oceans 8 Alaska. So this is a band, another band that I, they're a little bit of a weird one. They're almost the same vein as Invent Animate for me because their musicianship is insane. Chris Turner, super nice guy. Holy crap. Probably one of the nicest musicians I've ever in interacted with. His drumming is also insane it's ridiculous one of the best drummers in the scene absolutely uh their music has some cool japanese elements thrown in here and there uh crazy structures crazy gent grooves and stuff however i feel like none of their songs really like i go back to and uh, jam a lot so they're not going to be a crank it up every time i'm going to say they're pretty good however their technicality and musicianship is fucking all day every day but their songs to me are just pretty good that's how i'm going to put it all right, I wonder if this is going to piss off some people, but Architects, I think people know this. I'm a fanboy. I know it. I'm a fanboy, but I I can argue why I'm a fanboy. So they were like pretty much a Dillinger escape plan copycat at the beginning, right? They were math core. They were crazy. And uh, then each album after that, like, you know, they, they're they so fucking heavy in their old stuff. And then they try to switch styles with um, the here and now. That album's actually kind of good, but during that time, I'm like, what the hell is this? You guys were like a heavy mathcore band. And then they put Daybreaker, which was like a post-hardcore metalcore album with like one of my favorite songs that they've ever written, uh, These Colors Don't Run. And then after that, that's when they got commercial success with Lost Forever, Lost Together. And now pretty much half the scene is sounding like Architects. All the gent grooves riffs are all littered in the scene. Architects is crazy influential. It's disappointing that their new album was very meh, but this band to me is always all day, every day. Give me some hollow crown, early grave breakdowns. I go ham to that shit at the gym. Seriously, they are all day, every day, more than any other band on this list for me because their music just is my gym playlist. Uh, the Amity Affliction. <sighs> I haven't heard enough of their songs. I don't know if I'm, if I'm qualified to rank the Amity Affliction. Pittsburgh was good. Uh, some of the other songs were pretty good. I know a lot, a lot of people resonate with these guys because they have like a very, they're like a very emo band and their vocals are good. I just find them tolerable. I need to hear more songs though. I need to hear more songs to make a proper judgment. I know that, but I'm just going to put them as tolerable for now. Eskimo Callboy. 
Eskimo Callboy. Hypa Hypa. Everyone knows. It's a classic. It literally was a classic in the making. Then we got the moves two for two. I enjoy it more than Hypa Hypa. The rest of their music, eh. Like MC Thunder is pretty funny. So, so far, they've only had two bangers, even though their song with Kali Kaczynski or whatever that I reacted to was actually pretty fun too. Eskimo Callboy doesn't have enough hits for them to be a crank it up every time or all day, every day. They're just pretty good. But Hypa Hypa and We Got The Moves would be a crank it up every time. However, the, this band needs more, more hits. If I Were You, uh, these guys are essentially event animate and, uh, you know, they're prog metalcore. They're pretty good. They're just kind of there for me. Sienna Skies, never heard of them. Bullet for my Valentine. All right, Bullet. Their EP is coming out tomorrow. And uh, the songs are pretty good. <laughs> they're not amazing, they're pretty good. But The Poison, man, The Poison was a huge album for the scene. And it still holds up. Tears Don't Fall, Hand of Blood are classic metalcore songs. Are they all day every day though? Those two songs for sure, I can blast those every day. But the rest of their catalog, I'm look. The bands need to have consistency as well, right? They're just pretty good. Ah, oh, no, I don't know. Crank it up every time. Oh man, I am torn. If it's Tears Don't Fall and Hand of Blood and The Poison, crank it up every time. But if it's their entire discography, pretty good. Pretty good. I feel like they have more weaker albums than they have good albums. So I'll leave it as that. Delaware's Prada. Okay, this band. They're legends. They're legends as well. However, the, the comparison here is that they progressively have like gone a little bit better. Their old stuff was like a little bit more classic metalcore style, you know, typical kind of breakdowns, heavy synth electronic elements, and it was like a little bit tacky. But then they they always kind of matured. Dead Throne was like a big step in the right direction. And um, then they came out with like the Zombie 2 EP for everyone watching. One of the best EPs of the year, if not the best EP of the year, in my opinion. I fucking love that EP. I think it's the best work that Del Wars Pro has ever put out. And the band has been around for so long. That's the thing. They've matured their sound. They've consistently been good. Um, and also their legends. Are they all day, every day or crank it up every time? Ah, they're a crank it up every time for me. I can't put them all day, every day. Fit for a cane. Okay, fit for a cane. The album with Backbreaker, Tower of Pain. Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo -hoo -hoo. Is there an owl here? I don't know. <laughs> that that album is so good. Um, I absolutely love that album. It, it's not anything groundbreaking, but holy crap, I feel like their breakdowns smash. And also the choruses are just pop. I think production helps big time, right? Uh, guitar tone is huge on that record as well. But then they came out with the path. Why? Why'd you do that? Why'd you have to do that? So because of that, they're just pretty good. They're just pretty good. They have some solid hits, but damn, the path was weak. Atreyu, Bleeding Mascara. That song was huge back in the day. All the sweeps and crazy guitar work was mind blowing. When I was a little young lad, I remember that shit just blowing my mind. I saw them live too, and they were really impressive. However, they just, they're not consistent. They're not consistent. And honestly, I don't think their music holds up as well either. I think they're just tolerable. And I think their new stuff is not in proper direction of where they should be. So that being said, we got to go to Phineas. Now their new album, pretty, pretty good, man. I, I like the new album. Uh, some people are saying like album of the year. It's not album of the year for me, but I think it's some solid classic metalcore. Breakdowns are awesome. Energy is awesome. Choruses are pop. Guitar work is so good. It's like, I don't know. They just got that classic metalcore vibe and they absolutely crush it. But I don't I, I haven't listened to much of their old stuff. Mm, they're a little bit torn between crank it up every time or pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to put them as pretty good. Pretty good. Sorry, Fineas fans. Sorry. I, I enjoy them. Enjoy them. Okay. With the word alive. What? That album with the guy in the white trench coat. Uh, Deceiver, I think. Oh, that album was incredible. Even their old stuff. This was supposed to be Bless the Fall's new band. Bless the Fall came out and they're like... Craig Mabbitt's like, I want to be in a heavy band. So let's start the word live. Eventually they kicked him out or he left or something. And then Tyler Telly Smith joined the band and fucking crushed it. The EP was awesome. Their first album deceiver was so good. And then they just kept dipping. No consistency. I'm looking for consistency here. So the word live, they're pretty good. 
However, Deceiver is a crank it up every time for me. Die Art is Murder. They're not Metalcore. We Came as Romans. Oh, man. These guys messaged me or emailed me to check out their music, but I, I got to be honest. I got to be honest. They're, their old stuff was not for me. New stuff is pretty good, though. Yep. There we go. I just said it. Pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, that's as much as I'm going to break it down. Motionless in White. This is another band that has a huge fan base. There's like some bands that like have bigger fan bases than others that are more like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like dedicated, I guess. So Motionless, Motionless in White is one of them. I find their music to be solid. They got the good high energy vocals are on point. Guitar work is solid. It's not, it's exactly what you expect. They got a little bit of a horror element into their music that makes them stand out a little bit. I think they're just pretty good. I'm going to put them there. Of Mice and Men. Of Mice and Men is the same boat like as a lot of these other metalcore bands. Uh, I know a lot of people are really liking their new EPs. I haven't checked out their new stuff because honestly, their music doesn't overly excite me. They're a fun metalcore band. Maybe it's a little bit of metalcore fatigue, but their new stuff doesn't really pique my interest. Uh, they are pretty influential. They're just pretty good. They're just pretty good. Make them suffer. No time to waste. Crank it up every time. Make Them Suffer's new stuff fucking hits. Their last album was a, a solid metalcore release, man. And Contraband is one of the best metalcore songs of the year. Fight me. Fight me. Kill Switch Engage. So, I've never really listened to too much Kill Switch Engage. So, I'm not... I shouldn't be ranking this. But, I know how important they are. And I know Howard Jones' vocals are just S-tier. They're S-tier. They're one of the most, if not most important band in metalcore. However, I don't really listen to them, so I can't really say all day, every day. But I'm going to put them at Crank It Up every time just because of how legendary they are. Chelsea Grin, they're not Metalcore. Come on, man. Colin. Colin, stop fishing. Started understanding Metalcore, man. Polaris. So Polaris wouldn't exist without Under Oath. That's why they're all day, every day. But Polaris is a solid band. They are, they got the riffs. They got the good courses. They got a little bit of pop punk, metalcore, and post-hardcore. They got all those elements. Drum beats are also like super infectious, man. I love the drumming on Polaris' work. They're crank it up every time, man. They're 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 good shit. They don't write bad songs. Trivium. Oh, Trivium. The people in the Discord. The people in Discord are all Trivium haters. I don't care. Feast of Fire is a bop. I, I said Feast of Fire is one of my favorite courses of the year, not Metalcore. Yeah, it's a little bit different. It's the same argument as Between the Barrier to Me and uh, Periphery, right? They're, they mix in like Prog and also um, Thrash, but they do have a strong Metalcore edge to them. I'm going to rank them. I'm going to rank them as Metalcore. They're cranking it up every time, man. Also, they're so consistently good. Miss May I. Uh, I've only heard a couple songs. They were pretty good. There, leave it at that. Azale Dine. So, you know, controversy aside, Azale Dine is, uh, they're sick, man. Uh, An Ocean Between Us is such a solid record. It still holds up to this day. That's the thing. Uh, they got a lot of people into metalcore. The riffs are amazing. Uh, drumming and vocals are so catchy. Tim's uh, vocals are also badass. New songs are actually pretty good, too. Crank it up every time. Asking Alexandria. Okay. So, with Asking Alexandria... This was during that time when I, I, I thought Metalcore was weak. I thought Metalcore was lame. You know, the, it was also like, I don't know. It was during the time with like that cheesy lyrics where it's just like, you stupid fucking whore. And I don't know. It wasn't for me, man. And uh, Asking Alexandria was one of the pioneers in that. And I just really did not like them. And then uh, I listened to some of their songs because through the reaction channel, they're all right. And also through Twitch, you guys are showing me the one stuff with the old vocalist. I, I, I forget all the names, man. But he was pretty good. New songs are, sound like they're going to like a five finger death punch kind of route. So, tolerable. In Flames. Now, is this band Metalcore? In Flames is a little... This is the same argument about Trivium. But I would say Trivium has more core elements in their music. In Flames is more heavy metal. I'm not going to rank In Flames. They're not, they're not core enough. No. But these guys are crazy important. Pierce the Veil. They're post-hardcore. Alexis on Fire. They're post-hardcore. You Me at Six, that's a rock band. Dance Gavin Dance, post-hardcore. Come on, Colin! Amorosa, post-hardcore. Uh, Hands Like Houses, post-hardcore. Kingdom of Giants, finally a metalcore band. Okay, okay, Kingdom of Giants. New album was, went under a lot of people's radars, man. New album was really, really good. Uh, not one bad song, although their structures got super repetitive. They still wrote bangers. Um, their old stuff was good too. I really 
enjoy the vocals and then also the synth work um very heavy cyberpunk elements to their music now and it's a cool new direction for the band i think that's really good for them they're still relatively new they're in, so because of that i'm just going to say pretty good they'd be a crank it up every time if they put out a couple more cds silver scene emo dead by april don't know enough of their music aren't they post hardcore maybe they're metalcore i don't know avatar this is definitely not a metalcore band our hollow our home i haven't listened to enough of their music but from what i heard pretty good all right this is actually the last band on this list because uh the rest of the bands i i other haven't really listened to their music or they're not metalcore enough Barry tomorrow though they're good they the clean vocals are my favorite part about this band i really enjoy the clean vocals um the rest of their music for me has me like a little bit left to be desired about because i feel like i don't know there's nothing overly that different from e everything else other than just having some good clean vocals because of that just pretty good but this is actually not the final list all right that's the end of the live stream but here's my edit couple bands that we're missing let's show off the tier chart where my big ass head is not blocking the view now time to add a couple more bands first up in the pretty good category let's put up boom day seeker the plot in you glass cloud within the ruins and texas in july these bands are solid i don't crank them up every time you know they have some solid hits some bands are still relatively new to be all day every day so maybe in a couple years they'll get up there but now it's time to crank it up every time i've added a lot more bands to this section so let's go <laughs> boom straight from the path spirit box norma jean loathe darkest hour counterparts oh sleeper sound planet structures monuments converge knock loose these bands are not only influential they also just put a banger upon banger and i crank it up every time and with that being said it's time to move on to the all day every day some of my favorite bands were definitely missing in this list, so let's get started. <laughs> Boom! Protest the Hero, Every Time I Die, Misery Signals, The Human Abstract, Sixth, Dillinger Escape Plan, which I know could be mathcore, I don't care. These bands I listen to almost every day. They are part of my gym playlist. I absolutely love these bands. They helped shape my love for metalcore, and they were severely lacking in this tier list, so. All right, guys, and that is the ultimate metalcore tier list. You don't need any other list because this is data driven, right? Science based. OK, so if you disagree, it means you're wrong. All right. Data, hard analytics. But with that being said, man, I'm curious to know what your tier ranking is. So comment down below. Spice up my life. Where am I wrong? Where am I right? What bands are missing? You know what to do. Go crazy in the comments. Also, if you got to this point in the video, seriously, like in this long video, you've gone to this point, you watch it all. Holy shit. I appreciate the shit out of you, man. Feel free to hit that subscribe button. I feel like you probably already subscribed because you're a loyal viewer. Also, leave a like if you enjoyed the video, but on that, thank you for tuning in. Until next time. Peace.